So you're running low on disk space, which means it's time for a new SSD. But just doing a quick search returns a myriad of choices. Not all SSDs are the same. You have two and a half inch SATA, M.2 SATA, M.2 NVMe. Then you see numbers like 2230, 2242, and 2280. Then you have PCIe Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5 SSDs. What does all this mean? With so many choices, it can be a bit confusing to say the least. How do you know which one is compatible with your system, offers the best performance, or has the storage capacity you need? In today's video, we hope to help clear up the confusion and explain the key differences between all those SSD options. If you're not familiar with the different interface names, types, and form factors, then you're in the right place. In order to have a better understanding, let's go over what these choices look like, and then we'll get into the different SSD interfaces and what their capabilities and limitations are. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for more PC tips and tricks. So let's begin at the base level. What is an SSD? SSD stands for solid state drive because unlike traditional mechanical hard drives, they have no moving parts. It uses non-volatile flash storage to save your data. The advantages of SSDs are they're quiet, dramatically faster, and more durable than mechanical hard drives. Boot times are significantly faster when booting from an SSD compared to a traditional hard drive. That speed difference is also noticeable when loading apps, running games, and performing disk read and write intensive tasks. Solid state drives are available in a range of form factors based on numerous underlying technologies. First up, let's get into SATA SSDs. SATA stands for Serial ATA or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment. It's an interface used to connect drives to motherboards. It replaced the old PATA or Parallel ATA standard. SATA SSDs are built on the SATA interface connection utilizing the AHCI standard. And the latest version of SATA is SATA 3, which theoretically runs at six gigabits per second. The first consumer SATA SSDs were two and a half inch drives, which are similar in size to the small two and a half inch hard drives that became the standard in earlier laptops. SATA 3 SSDs max out at about 500 to 600 megabytes per second, which is a nice jump in performance compared to the slow mechanical hard drives of yesteryear. Many modern motherboards still offer two and a half inch SATA SSD support. Here's what the SATA connection looks like on a laptop, and this is what it looks like on a desktop motherboard. SATA SSDs are pretty affordable and still a good upgrade option if you're on a tighter budget and want to give a PC running on a mechanical drive a nice bump in performance, or if you want to add faster extra storage to your current system. Over the years, SATA evolved for use in other form factors. The next form factor is called MSATA or Mini Serial ATA. Smaller form factor systems and laptops transitioned to this shrunk down SATA interface. Here's what an MSATA drive looks like. Although smaller and closer in size to the M.2 drives, MSATA is too large to fit in an M.2 slot. And despite the smaller form factor, MSATA is based on the same underlying SATA technology as their two and a half inch counterparts and have the same limitations which means these drives max out at around 500 to 600 megabytes per second. Next, we have M.2 SSDs. M.2 was originally known as the Next Generation Form Factor, or NGFF, and was developed to replace the MSATA standard. Here are a couple of M.2 drives, and this is what the connection looks like on a motherboard. It's compatible with the SATA interface and the NVMe protocols. M.2 drives are available in a number of sizes, which are the numbers you tend to see next to the words NVMe when you're searching for those drives. For example, 2230, 2242, or 2280 represent the width and length of that M.2 drive. This M.2 drive is 2242, and this one is 2280, meaning it's 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters in length. This one 
happens to be the most popular NVMe size in computer systems. So in most cases, if you have an M.2 drive in your PC, it is an M.2 2280 drive. M.2 SATA and M.2 NVMe look extremely similar. So make sure you're purchasing the drive that's compatible with your system. Here's how you tell the difference. An M.2 SSD that has both an M key and a B key, as we have here, will be a SATA SSD. An M.2 drive with only an M key will be an NVMe SSD. M.2 NVMe drives are the latest and greatest when it comes to the consumer SSD technology. NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express and is designed to work with flash memory using the PCIe interface. PCIe stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. Running on the PCIe interface provides the ability to transmit data on up to four data lanes simultaneously, which allows more data to be transferred. As a result, M.2 NVMe SSDs provide read and write speeds many times faster than SATA based SSDs. For example, as I mentioned earlier, SATA based SSDs are capped at 500 to 600 megabytes per second, while the fastest NVMe drives based on PCIe Gen 5 are moving data between 11,000 to 14,000 megabytes per second respectively. With every generation of PCIe SSDs, performance doubles. The previous PCIe 3rd and 4th gen also provide significant performance gains over SATA SSDs, delivering transfer speeds over 3,000 to 7,000 megabytes per second. However, please be aware that buying a Gen 5 NVMe drive won't result in those speeds if your motherboard only supports PCIe Gen 3 or 4. Ensure compatibility before purchase. So if you're a gamer, content creator, or just an enthusiast looking for a high performance system, an NVMe drive is the way to go. All right, now that we've helped clear up a few things, which SSD do you choose? Are you looking for a high performance system or are you just looking for improved performance in the system you have? Well, much of that decision will be based on system compatibility and your budget. The age of your PC will dictate a lot. If it's more than 10 years old, it's less likely to have an M.2 connection or NVMe compatibility. If possible, check the label on your existing drive and compare the drive in your system to one of my SSD examples here. That should help you get an idea of what you may have. Then you can make a decision on what to go with. But what's important here is that you have a better understanding of the differences between the drive choices available and that you can confidently make the right buying decision because the right SSD upgrade can make quite the difference in the performance of your PC. Now that you've chosen your SSD, what's next? Are you planning to transition your system to this new drive? Cloning your system is a fast and easy way to do so. Maybe you'd like to create additional partitions on the new drive after cloning, or possibly repartition your old drive to use as extra storage afterwards. A simple tool that can help you do that is EaseUS Partition Master. Let's take a quick look at how you can perform those tasks using the Partition Master utility. To download Partition Master, let's go to EaseUS.com. We're going to check out Partition Master for Windows. And don't worry, if you're a beginner, EaseUS has done a great job making things simple and easy to navigate. It's such a versatile utility. Under Partition Manager, you have all the partition management tools. You can resize, move, and delete partitions. Under Disk Clone, you can migrate your OS, clone the OS disk, clone partition, and clone the data disk. You can use Partition Rescue to recover deleted partitions. But you can also use Eases Partition Master to free up space on your current drive if you're not ready to make the leap to a new SSD. They've made it so simple, it's become a must-have tool for many PC users. We'll leave links in the description for those who need to migrate their data or system to their new SSD. Here are a couple of tips before we go. The best times for shopping for a new SSD is around the holiday seasons. So look out for the best deals during these times. Also, keep in mind that buying the fastest drive 
doesn't guarantee you the fastest performance if your motherboard and chipset doesn't support it. If you have any thoughts or if you would like assistance with SSD recommendations, feel free to leave a message in the comments. And for reliable, easy to use disk utilities, check Ezos.com and have a look at the suite of feature-packed applications. And remember to like and subscribe for more content from Ezos.